Welcome to the Gastro Girl Podcast. We bring together patients, experts, and health advocates who are all here to help you optimize your health. Here's your host, Jacqueline Gollin. Hey everyone, today's show is about non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, also known as NAFLD, N-A-F-L-D, and how implementing the Mediterranean diet can help improve your condition. We're so fortunate today to have the amazing registered dietitian <laughs> Niha Shah on today, and she's going to provide us with expert insight into the dietary changes you can make to optimize your digestive health. Now, whether you've been diagnosed with fatty liver disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, or maybe you haven't been eating as well as you should, Niha is here to tell you what you can do to sort of maybe tackle some of the fatty liver issues that aren't so great to have in your body. First, let me tell you a little bit about the amazing Niha. She has been specializing in gastroenterology, intestinal failure, intestinal transplant, hepatology, and nutrition support for the past 15 years. She's the proud owner of Niha Shah Nutrition, a GI and liver nutrition private practice. And her expansive knowledge about the Mediterranean diet is what I'd like to really focus on today. So let's get started. Niha, so great to see you again. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, we're always, it's always a pleasure. So let's start with the obvious. For those of us who may not know, what is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease? Great question. So non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, it really bottom line consists of fat accumulation or buildup in the liver that can occur without drinking significant amounts of alcohol or without having a genetic disorder or without taking medication that all may cause fatty liver. There are two main types of NAFLD, NAFL and NASH, where the primary difference between them two is that NASH includes a component of inflammation or injury. Certainly if NAFLD is not treated early, that it can lead to inflammation, injury, or fibrosis, which is scar tissue of the liver. Oh, wow. Poor liver. We got to love, we got to love the liver a little more. We do. We really do. <laughs> uh, so, you know, another obvious question, but I'm going to ask it anyway, because it's, we can't hear this enough. Are there lifestyle factors or dietary habits that can cause fatty liver disease? Yes, they are. So risk factors for NAFL are metabolic and lifestyle, and they're kind of intertwined or they overlap with each other. Diagnosis such as diabetes, dyslipidemia, which includes like high cholesterol or high triglyceride levels and metabolic syndrome, which is a component of, you know, changes in blood sugar levels or even having high cholesterol or high triglyceride levels along with high blood pressure are what is to be considered as metabolic risk factors. Lifestyle risk factors include a diet that's high in animal protein, which brings in more saturated fat and cholesterol, high in sweets, such as desserts or sodas, which brings in more fructose and less in dietary fiber, such as eating less fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes, which, you know, this, this way of eating all may increase the risk of NAPLD. Wow. Don't worry, patients who are listening out there, Niha will set us straight. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. So how does the, so we're going to just jump right into this, because this is really important is the Mediterranean diet. Now, what, how does the Mediterranean diet reduce these fat deposits in the liver? Okay, so one thing I will say is that early stages of NAPL can be reversible with changes in diet. I want, I'm going to say that again. It early be, stages. Early stages can be reversible with changes in diet. So it's really an opportunity to uh, look at the diet and really focus on what additions do we need to make into the diet um, to help reverse NAFL in its early stages. If reversible, there is a less chance for the NAFL to advance to inflammation or injury or fibrosis, which is all going to be very protective towards the liver. Making changes in the diet towards what we call the Mediterranean diet style of eating includes just more plant-based foods. Uh, and certainly examples I can give is that more fruits and vegetables and whole grains and legumes at almost at all meals every day and less animal protein such as meat and less sweets has been shown to help either reduce 
the metabolic risk factors, okay, such as the diabetes or metabolic syndrome, or it has lessened the fat accumulation in the liver. And this would be a diet to adopt as a lifestyle. But again, finding options that we enjoy out of those food options is the key to make this diet successful. Now, we don't want to give all the details away because you've done an amazing job with <laughs> two great courses in the GI On Demand Education University, and you've built your practice around really addressing this as well. So we don't want to give all the great details, but we do want to pique our audience's interest so that they check it out, whether they check out the courses on GI On Demand Absolutely. Or, go, or go to your website uh, to work with you individually. We are going to touch on what are the general principles of the Mediterranean diet? Now you mentioned a little bit, but you know, give us a little more insight of, about, Absolutely. about this. Um, so one thing I will say is that everyone eats very differently. So any information I provide here is gonna be on a, a general aspects of the diet and then how this diet may be more personalized really will require taking a deep dive into the courses or and certainly working with the dietitian. So the Mediterranean diet style of eating will just include a basic framework on you know, what foods, as I already mentioned before, to eat every day at all meals. And then again, how are those meals structured that one may enjoy? applicable to culture, lifestyle, how much time you want to spend in the kitchen, grocery shopping and more. And certainly the foods that are not recommended to be eaten on a daily basis, how do we still fit that into the diet? So you still enjoy having those foods such as um, the chicken or the animal protein. And then certainly um, using the example as sweets, you know, it's not saying that you can never have anything of a sweet food ever again. Again, it's a, how do we um, kind of build that into a Mediterranean way of eating that is not every day, maybe shared with others. And then we look at some options within that that are more personal for one who's following this diet. And that's what I love about dietitians such as yourself. You <laughs> always, you have the scientific background and knowledge, but you're also very creative with, with food and cooking and giving people ideas. And it's not like a death sentence. If you have to only eat the Mediterranean diet is probably one of the better ones. It's very beautiful, not only in to look at, but also it's delicious. It's the foundations are very delicious. Absolutely. It's always going to be a focus on additions, not necessarily subtractions and, or even looking at substitutions. And again, everyone eats so differently that uh, no two diets are alike. And that's why it's important to personalize along the way and, and, and see how this can fit. It's like working backwards. It's really seeing how we can fit this diet into one's lifestyle and culture and the day-to-day -day living or even traveling or dining out. <laughs> and it's pretty clean. And that's one of the other things about the Mediterranean diet. It's not processed food right. um, that you're eating and you can adapt it to, like you said, the culture or whatever your ethnic if you're Italian or Indian or whatever, uh, and you want to have a, a a dish, there are substitutions that can be made, right? Exactly. And that's why working with a dietitian or being able to ask questions of a dietitian so that you really understand and don't feel like you're being deprived of anything that you like. So Absolutely. We, we, want, yes. we want patients happy and healthy. Can you share a few tips um, on menu planning and grocery shopping while on this diet? And again, I think this is one of the probably, I don't want to say easy, but it's probably one of the more uh, people would like this, this approach. And when they see what it's about, I think people would like it from a taste perspective, from a health perspective. It's not something so restrictive. Absolutely. So when it, when it comes to menu planning, I will highlight a tip or two. Um, certainly what I will recommend is that one thing I will stress, there's no need to plan out every single day, every single meal, every single snack. That is a lot of planning. Okay. <laughs> yes. But what is one or two days in the week that we can pick one meal to plan for? Would this involve picking two recipes for those two days? Or maybe, you know, menu planning also involves prepping ingredients in advance, like chopping up ingredients that you can use on that day for a meal that you can easily put together. So what is one to two meals in the week that you can plan for and plan for leftovers too. I think that can be helpful on days that are busy. Um, and certainly, like I said, um, prepping ingredients beforehand, like 
boiling eggs or mar uh, marinating any type of fish or tofu or even chopping up fruits and vegetables. Again, they're ready to go. So when you are ready to put that meal together, you're not spending all that time dealing with the labor aspects of that. You can just put it together <laughs> and that yeah. could be one way. Yeah. Yeah. And just to, you know, make a, make a, a comment here, planning. I, I think from my perspective, I'm, you know, I'm busy working, whatever <laughs> preparation can, can help. You're not grabbing for the, you always grab yes. for the easy. And if the easy is crackers yes. and hummus, yes. you know, you know, maybe it's, you know, carrots or celery and hummus, Yes, you know, so to have that already cut up and washed when you have, you know, 10 minutes before your next conference call, yes. it's, a, it's a good choice. And I think that planning is so important. It is. It, it, it can, it really is. And like I said, make it easy for yourself. Easy, you know, easy um, I've seen others write out seven days worth of meals and they're trying to figure out grocery shopping. And, and that's one way, if it really works for that one individual, that's perfectly fine, but it doesn't have to be that as well. Um, you can focus on a one to two days in the week where you focus on two meals. And it's really a mode of practicing as well. I use practice a lot with my uh, patients on it's skills, you know, it's developing the skills in the kitchen to help plan for these meals. So starting with one to two meals a day would be, or in the week of, so yeah, yeah, that would be helpful. Yeah. And then just understanding, like, if you know what Mediterranean diet foods are good, you can yes. kind of be creative. You can cut up all your vegetables and maybe use it this way for a soup one day and maybe Absolutely. Stir, stir fry the next day, but you're, you don't have to, you know, and, and I think this is where we maybe get all confused. We think we have to have like a million types of meals and recipes when if we just keep it simple mm -hmm. and, and just trade off a little bit you know have the basics that are that make you feel good and maybe they don't bother you if you have other issues maybe IBS or something you know what you can eat and what you can eat incorporate that into what you're saying a Mediterranean diet and then not feel like you have to have so many variations right as long as Absolutely. you're getting proper yes. nutrition Yes. Uh, you don't have to have like a million types of rest. I think that's where people get, I know I get freaked out. Like I just try to keep it simple. Keep it simple. And, you know, I always tell my patients that your input is so valuable. I'm here to guide, but you're the one has to go home and do this at the end of the day. So I need <laughs> to understand a little bit more on your lifestyle and what goes on in your kitchen or how your lifestyle is related to dining out or traveling because we need to be able to support those different environments uh to help plan as well yeah well I'm glad you mentioned dining out so <laughs> and I and I'm also gonna go on a limb and say I think this is one of the, the more easy diets Mediterranean diet which is really a lifestyle of how you're choosing yes. foods to eat in in a dining out experience like I think it's pretty straightforward and more e probably easier than other things not so restricted so how what do you recommend for patients and are there any challenges for someone just getting started with this absolutely so one thing I'll say there's no reason to avoid dining out simply due to following a recommended way of eating there's always foods in every cuisine that could be incorporated into a Mediterranean um, diet style of eating. So a, a tip that I can highlight is that any cuisine that you are eating or interested in eating foods from on that particular day, what are some plant-based foods that we can incorporate as sides of those meals or as a part of that meal? So if you're going out for Asian foods, can we make sure there are some vegetables in the stir fry or some tofu in the stir fry? Um, if we're going out for Mexican food, you know, what are some beans and avocado that we can add to that meal as a part of that? So what are some plant-based foods? And I will reinforce plant-based foods are your fruits and your vegetables and your whole grains and your legumes, like your beans and lentils that can be added as a side or a part of that meal. So you can incorporate some plant-based way of eating into that meal that you, you know, uh, want to eat. And it's important that you pick foods that you would enjoy. It's, it's hard to eat when you're forced oh, to eat something and 100%. pinch your nose and swallow your food. It's not going to happen. So oh, no. you have to enjoy it. <laughs> no, I don't think people would be listening to us if they, if they knew that. We're so yeah. <laughs> yes. No, yes. but, but on a serious note, you do a wonderful job, um, with these courses on GI on demand. You. The first one is just an overview of the Mediterranean diet, right? Can, yes. And what can people expect from that, the first one that you did? Absolutely. So the webinar really includes a review of what is NAPLED, 
what may cause NAPL, and a discussion on the framework for the Mediterranean diet. And there are, you know, tips on what, again, what foods to include every day at meals and what not to include every day as well, as we already outlined. And certainly while learning the framework on how to build a meal within this diet, then how can we incorporate and be successful with grocery shopping, meal preparation, and dining out as a part of that, because that's all part of the mix of implementing a diet successfully. Yeah, you do a great job with that. And then when you get all excited after you listen to Niha's wonderful overview of NAFLD and the Mediterranean diet, she has an even better three-part series, right, on yes. basically implementing the Mediterranean diet. Explain to our listeners what they can expect from that course. And I, and I love this part because it's on demand. There's a nominal course. I mean, it's like a hundred bucks. Yes. You, get, you get Niha on demand for like three hours and you can stop, <laughs> start, rewind, go back download our handouts. I mean, this is a, this is awesome. It's like having Niha in your living room, right? So what can we expect from this three-part series? I would have to say the three-part series focuses on the hows. Okay. It, it's, it's easy to find information on the internet or a handout saying, yes, eat more fruits and vegetables. But this really, this three-part series focuses on the hows into the different foods that are recommended within the Mediterranean diet. So it really takes a deep dive on not just fruits and vegetables and beans and lentils and chickpeas and avocado and nuts and olive oil, but it's really learning how to grocery shop, how to eat, how to cook meal and snack ideas and more. So for example, as a little bit of a teaser, there is a difference between extra virgin olive oil and refined olive oil, but the three-part series will review the differences, how to include the types of olive oil in the diet and how to store the olive oil as a part of a way to be successful with olive oil. Okay, I need to I need to sign up for this course. I didn't realize <laughs> I've always wondered about that. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, so again, a deep dive into all those different foods are, are the foundation of a Mediterranean diet and, and really focusing on um, the different corners of the plate to help bring these foods in and build up a balanced meal. So I will highly encourage everyone to take part of the three part series to really learn how to implement these different foods into the diet. I love it. I love that you, you give the why in your introductory webinar and then exactly. the how. And exactly. that's what we really want. We want to know how to do it. Yes. And like I said, you get Niha on demand. I mean, yes. what, what more can you want, right? Yes. That's awesome. So Niha, is there anything else we missed here? Anything you want to say to our listeners? I, I can't stress enough that, you know, how we eat is so personal to us. So um, I'm hoping all of these tips will help, you know, build up a meal that you would enjoy off the Mediterranean diet. Anytime one does not enjoy what they're eating, that's a red flag. We need to look into why and how we can fix that. So the Mediterranean diet for NAFLD, it can be a lifestyle diet. There's a lot of food options that are, are available within different cuisines. And it's really important that we focus on what to add more of that you would enjoy as a part of this diet. Oh, this is so great. Niha, as always, I'm so thankful for your being here and sharing your wonderful depth of knowledge on the Mediterranean diet. For our listeners, please check out Niha's free webinar on GI On Demand University by visiting education.giondemand.com. And if you think the Mediterranean diet could help you, definitely try out her three-part series guided by Niha. Thank you again. Don't forget to rate and review us on your favorite podcast you. app. And really appreciate um, everyone's attention today. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Thank you for listening to the Gastro Girl podcast. For more information and resources, please visit gastrogirl.com. Do you have a question for Gastro Girl? Please email podcast at gastrogirl.com. The information, opinions, and recommendations presented in the Gastro Girl podcast are not a substitute for medical advice from your healthcare professional. Please consult a licensed clinician in your state regarding all matters related to your health.